when I first introduced this concept of the trim treatment to the world at a, at a meeting in the, the Bay Area called the Health Extension Salon, I believe. Uh, and, um, and I mentioned at the end of, of the uh, talk that there's something that I called thymic magic at the end of the talk. And, and the thymic magic aspect has to do with the fact that the thymus actually has two jobs. It manufactures cells that destroy enemies, and it also uh, manufactures cells that do not, do not destroy friend, in other words, self. And uh, it's that second aspect that's just really interesting because if you have a thymus, which most of us don't, you know, to speak of after the age of 30 or so, uh, but if you have a decent amount of thymus, you can actually re-engineer the thymus to accept any graft as self and not reject it. And this has been shown in every animal model there is of transplant, and it always works, including in large animals. It uh, seems like something that uh, would be doable in humans uh, based on what we saw in trim. In other words, in trim, we saw we were able to regenerate the thymus. Uh, that means that there's some place to do this engineering work on. Uh, it involves a, a minor surgical procedure to introduce the right antigens into the thymus. Uh, but once you do that, uh, just give it a few months and your uh, transplant rejection should be eliminated for life. You can then go off immunosuppression for the rest of your life and keep that kidney as though it were from your identical twin, which means it will last for 25 years instead of for five or 10 years. Uh, but it actually gets better than that because you can then apply the same technology to curing all autoimmune diseases for exactly the same reason. Because an autoimmune disease is when the body forgets that you are you and it starts attacking you. But you can reprogram the thymus to recognize that that thing that is being attacked is actually you and delete all of the cells that are engaging in the attack. This also has been proven to work in every animal model that's been tried in, which are a large number of them. And nobody has tried this in humans, just as nobody's tried the transplant rejection in humans yet either. So if we succeed as a company, these are other multi-billion dollar areas that we wanna get into. And again, that would be a nice place for investors to jump in here. I actually um, run this company called 21st Century Medicine during the day. We have a pig uh, colony uh, in the building so we can do pig experiments. And uh, uh, there's a lot of interesting immunological work done on pigs. Uh, so we could actually test this rejection issue in the pig model with rel relatively little overhead because the colony already exists and I run the lab. So I don't have to charge my other company that much money to do these studies. So, you know, that's another potentially highly strategic way that actually having investment in the company could help us, which will take us another 20 years to raise the money at the rate we're, we're going at right now. But of course I expect that to accelerate, but just uh, for any investor types out there, uh, these are not fantasies either. I mean, the, the animal studies are unequivocal. They're numerous, both with respect to transplant rejection and autoimmunity. Uh, it's just that nobody has bothered to try this in people for reasons that escape me, just as nobody bothered to try to regenerate the thymus in humans until we came along, except for a few brave doctors working on HIV patients because their patients were dying in front of their faces and even they have seemingly given up on that process uh, because um, they're worried about their, their patients getting cancer, which they haven't gotten cancer, but they, so, so even that has been sort of dying out. So uh, somebody's got to do these things and darn it, we're going to do it if nobody else does. Okay, so uh, the talk in the program is about what's next, but uh, before we get into what's next, I wanna remind you briefly about what we've done in the past and where we are now so you can understand the significance of what's next a, a bit better. What got us started uh, is uh, this observation here that uh, we all have this master gland of the immune system, the thymus gland, uh, but unfortunately for us, by the time we're 30 or 40 years uh, of age, almost all of the functional mass of the thymus is gone. 
And that's un unfortunate because we need that thymic functional mass to make T cells that defend us against uh, infectious disease and cancer. And I roughly estimate that after the age of uh, 50, at least a third of us die as a consequence of that involution of the thymus. Next scroll, thank you. So uh, there was evidence that we could actually regrow the thymus. And so we decided to do a clinical trial back in 2015 to 2017. And we found that yes, indeed, we could, based on MRI imaging of uh, functional thymic mass, we could regrow functional thymic mass in people up to the age of 65. And in fact, uh, we could see reappearance of new uh, thymus manufactured cells in the bloodstream and a disappearance of certain senescent uh, T cells, which are making way for the new ones that are coming out. We also saw a sign of reduced inflammation, which we were hoping to see, reduced uh, prostate cancer risk and disease, and even changes in hair color in a few of our people. Scroll, please. And with respect to hair color changes, a thing like that, that sort of suggested a general anti-aging effect. So Steve Horvath ran four different epigenetic aging clocks on our uh, volunteers and showed that in every case, aging seemed to be going in reverse, at least based on the output of those clocks. Later on, Steve went back and had another look at the data based on a completely different metric, which is the plasma measurement that we were just hearing about, the plasma pheno age clock of uh, Morgan Levine, and found the same thing. Next scroll, please. So for that reason, we decided to go on to see if we could replicate those results. So we're calling uh, the new trial the TRIM-X, extension of the original TRIM trial. Uh, we're dividing it up into different tranches. The first one is A, which we've uh, completed as of this month. Uh, we don't have all the data in yet, but it's beginning to show some uh, signs of replicating what we saw before. Uh, the aged population is about uh, eight years uh, older, uh, but epigenetically, they're the same age as the original trim population, so they're a different kind of kettle of fish. We saw a little bit of hair darkening, but not as much as what we saw in the uh, trim trial. But we have seen improvements in prostate cancer risk, uh, a decrease in uh, CRP, uh, and the immune results and the epigenetic aging results will probably be in by the end of this month, but unfortunately don't have them yet. But we do have uh, data in on the plasma pheno age clock. And uh, in the original TRIM trial, about 51% of the people responded positively in that regard, although all of them responded positively in terms of the epigenetic aging aspect. We see the same proportion of responding positively in TRIM X A, so that's encouraging. Next slide, please. So I just had to throw this in. So Steve Horvath uh, volunteered to be a partial treatment control in our uh, group. And uh, he was taking uh, DHA metformin, but not growth hormone. I was taking DHA metformin and growth hormone. His statistical results were not there. My, mine were. Don't know if that means anything, but it's interesting. It kind of suggests that we can re reproduce some of the results from the TRIM trial. Next slide. So some new things that we're seeing uh, in TRIM XA, increase in lymphocytes both absolute and uh, percentage that correlates with reversal of plasma pheno age, but we did not see that in controls, only in the treated group. Next slide, please. Uh, we also saw some new things. So we've confirmed that in people that enter the trial with a high uh, carbon dioxide level in their blood, it goes down. That's suggestive of improved lung function. We have made a limited number of uh, measurements on people who have gone through exercise training at our campus. And we've seen uh, a 25% uh, uh, improvement in VO2 max on average uh, with a high statistical significance, again, suggesting improved lung function. Next. Uh, and going along with that, we're finding improvements in muscle strength, uh, both in men and women, as you can see down here. And in exercise tolerance is indicated by the lactate uh, uh, threshold. Improving this gentleman up in the right uh, corner uh, entered the trial at the age of almost 81, and a little, a little while later, he started uh, enrolling in 5K races and started sending us his times. And I think if we started doing linear regression through those times, we'd see that it keeps going down, and he, kept, he says, well, I beat my record, I didn't even try. So we may have some more objective data that come out of these, some of these subjective reports. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing that we saw in addition to the uh, improved exercise capacity, muscle strength, et cetera, is a 14% decrease in the total body fat percentage. Uh, in interesting, we didn't see that in trim. Next slide, please. Uh, so now getting to the what's next part of the presentation. So we have a lot of science ahead of us uh, that we wanna do. Uh, 
Uh, we've already started the Trimex B trial as of this January. We're going to be going on to Trimex C and Trimex D over the next few years. Um, we're also starting uh, something called the ACE trial. So that stands for Advanced Cancer uh, Evaluation. And this afternoon, you'll hear from Ashish uh, Tripathi, who's got this uh, early detection method for cancer, but he would like to see this validated in other centers. So we're going to be helping him validate that pretty soon. We have some schemes for regenerating the thymus minute, without the need for using. One minute warning. OK, uh, I think, we're, I think we're, we'll make it. Um, uh, let's go back to that last slide, please. OK, so we want to regenerate the thymus without using growth hormone. Uh, we're working on that. We're going to be doing animal trials in the near future on tolerance induction in pigs and, and uh, more on the novel thymus regeneration. Next slide, please. We've begun taking apart the epigenetic landscape underlying age reversal as we've measured it. We have this unique database of people whose aging seems to go in reverse based on all these clocks, but what else is going on? So we've done uh, epigenome-wide association studies and seen a lot of hits and a lot of exciting data, which are just beginning to scratch the surface of. Hopefully that'll uh, lead to new therapeutics. Next, please. Uh, even though we are looking at alternatives to uh, growth hormone, there's a $2 billion market for growth hormone right now. So we're looking at making our own either biosimilar or biobetters. Uh, we just had our US patent approved and we're expanding into uh, Europe uh, uh, probably this summer. So those are interesting things uh, that are happening next. There's some uh, orphan drugs that we want to acquire that uh, you know, have FDA approval, but the company died. Uh, we want to sort of exploit those things. And we're looking at, at a new uh, diagnostic technology for aging in general. So in summary, I think the, the, the results that we're getting are encouraging to us. The future remains exciting. You know where to find me. And if there are any questions, I'll, I'll try to address them. Over yes. there. Thank you. Thanks. Oh my god, so many hands up. OK, let's uh, this I, go for yes. it. Great stuff. Uh, my Thanks. question is, I'd love to be younger for sure. And uh, the question is, what does this mean for people who have autoimmune diseases where immune suppression is actually a therapy, right? For something like MS. Yes. Sorry, and things like drugs like Pectidera, where it actually is supposed to reduce the activity of T cells. So how do you think this will align? Yeah, we think we can solve those problems. And I, you know, I, I realize that saying that makes me look like an idiot, but actually there's a tremendous amount of animal data that's not been translated into humans yet, indicating that if you regrow your thymus, then you can manipulate what it recognizes as foreign, including yourself. So there are demonstrated animal studies that have reversed established autoimmune diseases. And the concept, the principle behind it, uh, pertains to all autoimmune diseases. It doesn't matter what it is. There's over 80 autoimmune diseases like that. We, and that's why we're doing some uh, tolerance induction studies in pigs uh, later this year or early next year. Because if we can prove this out and specifically how to make this work better in large animal models, I, you know, I'm sorry to say this, but I think that it's, it's the pathway to curing all autoimmune disorders, period. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. I mean, um, you know, the, in the, the relationship of, I guess, thymic indolation with sex hormones or something yes. like that. I mean, eunuchs in China, they had a reputation of living a lot longer than non the United States. I mean, it's too. a tough yes. penalty. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you, know but, you, you, you know, I mean, what was your effect? I was kind of curious. You, you saw muscle building when you, um, you, you know, you would think it would go the opposite way or something that, uh, yeah. Well, uh, so we're not actively, well, actually, in Trimex A, we did sort of actively adjust sex hormone levels. In Trimex B, we're not. In Trimex C, we may do something different. But um, our treatment is not working through sex hormone mechanisms. Uh, we're reversing aging by using anabolic compounds, growth hormone and DHEA, and then this uh, drug, metformin, to block some of the side effects of, of, of uh, growth hormone. And uh, growth hormone by itself makes your muscles bigger, but it doesn't make them stronger. But our people seem to be getting stronger. So I think that you have to do this in a balanced way. Pat, past uses of growth hormone, we've just not done it so right. So you, you're doing growth hormone or IGF-1? Yes, yes. Or? It's a very complicated brew that we're putting together. So that's why the muscle... That's yes, right. You're that's right. It's, it's, a new, it's a new finding. Sonia? Go, Sonia. Um, your people are getting stronger, but... 
it sounded like somebody took up running after they started your trial. I mean, how many of the people in the trial got really excited about doing something healthy and sudden, suddenly started exercising and some, maybe some, that's why they're getting stronger? That's a great question. So some of them, Joe actually, Hill. you want to say advice. something about I that? Actually, out. I just <laughs> want to speak to that because that's exactly what I did. I actually first saw my muscle tone increase. I was in the trial for 18 months and then I started exercising. But I got so much stronger, one of those curves was mine, that you would, I wouldn't do that without help. And uh, I know Greg has more quantitative information. Yeah, but her point is good. So I, th what seems to have happened is that people on the trial, after a while, they just felt like exercising, right? But most of them didn't do much until after a year. So most of the changes you saw were before a year. So including VO2 max and things like that, you cannot achieve VO2 max results like that unless you're an elite athlete working.